Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Uh, my next guest has been here before. He's a real funny guy, man, right up my alley. Makes great references. He's a sports funny guy, regular funny guy. And he's going to be doing the Gotham Live tomorrow yeah. for Access TV. And uh, you, 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 I have two names for you here, which yeah. is wonderful. Uh, your name's Jason Lawhead. Lawhead, that's yeah, it right. It says Jason Lawford right here. Like, Lawford, yeah. I'm Peter's, I'm Peter's illegitimate son. <laughs> I was a, I, I'm a rat pack baby. Yeah, you're Jason Lawhead. Lawhead. And uh, it's good to have you back, man. Thanks, man. I'm glad yeah. you guys had me back. I'm excited about being in New York and doing Access tomorrow for Live at Gotham. And, yeah, I uh, did that once. You know, I hosted it uh, for Mark Cuban. It's a great gig, and you're going to kill, and it's going to be great. And uh, I tell you, someone who does the 78 Yankees, it's just, you know, <laughs> especially being from Cleveland, it's just, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, well, we had to watch somebody good. You know what I mean? Like, I had to emulate well, you weren't a bad team good. back then. Like, Rick, no, Waits, the 70, the, no. Rick Waits, the pitcher for Cleveland, owned the Yankees in yeah. 78. Yeah. And the reason we had to play the Red Sox in that playoff game, the last fan appreciation day, the last day, Rick Wade's beat the Yankees. Yeah, and then he, <laughs> yeah, and then he never did. And he went to Philly and won a World Series. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we all, we always just get rid of. We went. We went. <laughs> up, I think we traded somebody. I forget who we traded for. Wayne Garland. Remember Wayne Garland? He was with the Brewers, twenty game winner. We get him. He's damaged goods. His elbows like you know rubber. Oh, we're just Garland. like that. he didn't even pass the physical. He was like three starts in, and we're like maybe we should give this guy a physical. I do remember. <laughs> I, I do remember Wayne Garland. Wayne <laughs> Garland. I'm like that guy. He's not even good enough to hang on a Christmas tree. What the hell did we trade for this guy for? Wayne Garrett. I get him mixed up. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, New York. This is amazing though, and I keep thinking I'm gonna move to this town, and every time I come here. The weather's worse. Well, you're from you went to L.A. I mean, you I went go to, to New LA. York or L.A. You're in the I'm right. I'm from Cleveland. But you, you, I mean, you know, if you're from Cleveland, you got to go to New York or L.A. You went to L.A. It's one of the places to be. I, I had to buy a tourist hat yesterday. Yeah, you know, what I mean? you ever get so cold that you had to get a, a hat like a four ninety nine tourist um, hat. Dude, you know, from being on the road, I never pack properly. Me you know how many airports I, I bought? You know, like, uh, I love St. Louis. <laughs> I I love Kansas. You know how many sweatshirts like that? Absolutely, I own? it's because I just buy them as you know, uh, best westerns and stuff in the airports. <laughs> um, yeah. So you guys, you guys were both at the Rose Bowl, right? Yeah, amazing yeah. game. I know you your side up? didn't win, but what a phenomenal uh, football game! Did you guys hook up? Did you see each other? No, no. We no? Kind of tried to. Yeah, but Burr Bur texted text me. Jason. Yeah, yeah. Burr yeah. texted you. Texted I texted you. John and said, Billy, "Hey, the board uh, shoulder smoking." We had that thing smoking by seven thirty in the morning. We I pulled that thing off. I'm gonna tell you something. I've smoked several of them, and sometimes they're really, really good. Sometimes I, I'm a hard critic on myself. This is the best I ever did. Really? Wow. This was the best I ever did. I did it. Uh, we could. We, we. It was about a four pounder. We smoked it just in a charcoal grilled indirect heat. I did it for about four and a half <laughs> indirect hours. Heat. That's wow. how you do it. You're gonna <laughs> smoke it. At, try try to keep it less than 200 right, degrees. Right, right. Uh, slow and low, sweet mm. heat. You that know, sounds, all sounds, of it. Sounds, it was so good. I made a homemade coleslaw with it. I sauteed uh, caramelized onions, so it was on a Kaiser with with uh, pulled pork, barbecue pulled pork. Oh my god! Um, and uh, coleslaw and, and and caramelized onions and oh, get Lavelle Crawford dude. back. Yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Wow. What I, I, you know? Well, well, Bird texted me uh, from the game. He said, "I'm with uh, I'm with Jason Lawhead at the Rose Bowl." Uh, it sounds like that sounds like fun. And you met Wofford? It was a blast. Kid? The weather yeah. was amazing, right? It was gorgeous. I mean, and Michigan uh, State deserved that game, but it was a great they football played game. played hard. Yeah. It was a great football Is game. Is that a you were rooting for? You were rooting for? No. No, no. no I'm just saying. Stanford. For Stanford, yeah. 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 And that's where, I, when I got your text, I was going uh, on my way to the Stanford tailgate that we bought tickets for, which was pretty sweet, too. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, the Rose Bowl the, uh, has one of those... Tailgate, you got to buy tickets. Uh, yeah, well, millions, Stanford puts millions it of tents out the there that you can buy into. Oh, okay. Puts on this was it tailgate. fun? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very swaggy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's nothing like Lots it. I, I tell everybody, once in your life, do it. I don't care if you have a dog in the fight. I don't care. It is, because I grew up, you know, in that era. Like, we grew up out here on the East Coast, yeah. in Cleveland, always snow. It was dark by the time kickoff was on the West Coast. So you're freezing by a right. fireplace, imagining, I had never been to California until I was 20. Right. So I'm imagining, what, what is it, shadows on the field and, <laughs> and, and daytime, yeah. people are in short sleeves? This is, this is, this is like utopia. I sure. remember watching games in Northern California as a kid. You're right, it looks so gorgeous there. <laughs> the field painted green grass. And yeah. Meanwhile, you've been like indoors for a month and a half, <laughs> yeah. figuring out why you live here. It's depressing, <laughs> when, uh, those Sundays when it gets late 
You got to go to school the next oh, day. And it's the worst. That know, 4 o'clock right. Sunday game was the worst. Right. Because I loved it because you got to see the 49ers, you know, during the heyday when I was a kid. Yeah. But then you knew, like, after that game, it was nothing but homework till you went to bed and well, then yeah, be full of school. Where I'm from, the eighth grade, uh, you know, uh, you're done, you owe a bookie two grand, too. In the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it terrible. Uh, now, you're a lot like me in the sense you do a lot of sports stuff in your stand-up. Do you I, I do. Of, I do a lot of yeah. sports stuff. Now, I, I, I mess around with, like, impressions, but I don't do it in my act. I just like, you know, I, I've been doing like a Hubie Brown one lately that I've been watching the NBA and the only thing I can First of all, he's 111. I love the guy. When is Hubie Brown? I know he's good at what he does, but. Okay, Mike, listen, this it, team. Okay, <laughs> like, like, he's always, okay, Mike. And he, the greatest thing is uh, Hubie because there's so many bad teams in the NBA. Yeah. I and mean, there's like, there's, there, when you, the league has more teams playing for last place than they do for first place. You're right. Yeah. You're Everybody's right. playing for a lottery pick. There's like five teams playing for first place. <laughs> and he, but he always finds the good in a bad team. He tries to like brighten the matchup up when there's like a <laughs> team that hasn't even won on the road yet. Like, let me tell you something. This team, okay, don't look at their record, Mike. They will hurt you <laughs> on the backboards, okay? And they are excellent. You know, creativity in the open court. Okay, don't look at their... They have not won on the road. Don't look year. at the record. Yeah, they, they, don't look at this team's record and their shooting percentages. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Because they will hurt you in the painted area. It's like, I, of course, they got seven, three seven-footers. Anybody can hurt you in a painted area. I know, they, I know, I know they've been shut out four times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, in the basketball, it's very rare. But yeah. so you can't, I know it sounds boring, but you can't look but at But listen, that. Mike, this is a game to watch. Okay, this is a team that is ready to win. I'm, yeah, predict I'm predicting the Bobcats will be in double digits. <laughs> During, during his second or third year, he said that Michael Jordan wasn't smart enough to run his offense, that's, or only Rory Sparrow was. That's right. And well, I think, that's that. You know what? If he really said that, he should be fired yeah, now. And he was. I mean, they replaced him with Kevin Lockery, didn't he? I mean, when you're getting replaced by Kevin Lockery, things. Rory are... Sparrow is better at running my offense than Michael Jordan is. That's, a, that's oh my, my head's gonna explode. Yeah. Uh, but who he's said that? Guy. No, I like you. Be I love you. Listen, as a Nick coach. He's one of my favorite Nick head coaches. You yeah, remember. he was a successful Nick head coach. He was the he, Bernard he was. King era, right? In the Bernard King, he was the Bernard guy. Oh, you took Boston to the ropes one year, didn't you? In, in, five, in 80, 84, 85 yeah. season. It was tough. You know, Bird always won in the mm. end. But, mm -hmm. but uh, Bernard King was scoring like crazy, and Ubi Brown was a fun guy to watch play. But that was the Rory, you know, it was yeah. Rory Sparrow, Rory was our guard. Rory Sparrow. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, what a great name. Uh, but the, he just looks like he's 114 years old. <laughs> he does. He's, he's got the liver does. spots. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. right? He does have the liver spots. Yeah, I can't eat. I can't he can't eat. wear a pair of glasses big enough to cover those liver. He's always got those I know. Harry Carey glasses on. I can't eat when I watch. That up. I can't eat. It's tough to eat. When I watch. It is. Yeah. I mean, look at me, and I like eating. But hockey's my new. I'm really into the hockey now, and I've never been That's a hockey a new guy. thing? Well, because I, we, we didn't have a team growing up. Yeah. Cleveland was never a hockey town. Right. And when What's LeBron the, left, they I had to find now? something. What? No, we have Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah, you're not going to Cleveland. That's two hours away. Yeah, yeah. No, they're the Blue Jackets. Well, how'd you I, get into hockey? When LeBron left, I had to find something else to watch in the wintertime. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, so, you know, I'm like, You Bird. totally abandoned the Cavaliers. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't abandon the Cavaliers. I just couldn't watch him some you know, it was like I the nba it. as a whole and you, I ended up buying one, you know those jackets the kids wear with every team logo on it right yeah i ended up buying one of those and they just peeled the heat one off so yeah. i was like i'm rooting for everybody else so you're still mad of course i'm still we talked about this you I, should I, be no i like talking about it because yeah. you know you know he's getting a pass now and Where he's gonna are, leave you think so of course he is they're not gonna rebuild he's not gonna rebuild they can't afford gonna... all three of them and if it's Dwayne wade's decision i think to stay or go, or and if he, if Dwayne White says I'm gonna I'm coming back, then they got get they got to get rid of Bosch. They can't hold him down, and they're, they're Dwayne's on Dunn's doorstep. Yep. And, and LeBron's not sticking around to rebuild. Where's anywhere. he gonna go? I People think the, say back I said to... Bulls last time I was on the show. I still think that's a, a chance. The Bulls. Clip, the Clippers are a chance. He Danny's loved him hooked Crystal. up in Chicago. You, you hear that? Yeah. Well, they just got Luol Dang off the books. They sent him to us. Yeah. He you, hates you, his you, life you, in Cleveland. I just had a buddy that had a drink with him a couple of weeks ago. And he goes, <laughs> hey, man, welcome to Cleveland. He was in a bar after a game, Luol Dang. And he goes, hey, man, welcome to Cleveland. You know, I know it's not the, you know, we're not the greatest team, but we're really happy to have it. And he goes, yeah, one shitty situation from the next. And he just took a <laughs> ship, sip of his drink. Oh. It was hilarious. Yeah. I, yeah but uh, you, you can't curse but oh, I, I, sorry. That's all right. Don't worry about it. It's hard. It's hard to remember. It was but I, 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 no, listen. So, do you hear that in the Bulls situation, LeBron James? I, I doubt it. I, well, where's he gonna go? People say he's going back to Cleveland. What about of that? Of course not. That's not gonna happen. He's, right? We're too bad. What I about mean, L.A.? You know? I think the Clippers are a front runner as well. 
Because Somewhere warm, bro. Yeah, uh, him and Chris Paul are really tight. And I think uh, with Doc Rivers out there, he looks at a guy like uh, Doc Rivers who beat him in Cleveland all those years. Him and Chris and, Paul and says, is a scary, scary uh, proposition. With one of those, I mean, they get, they'd have to get somebody off the – maybe Griffin would have to get moved, but you still have a guy like DeAndre Jordan. They, they've got uh, – man, that would be scary. Well, let's see. I mean, do you think they win a third this year? Indiana's, gonna, Indiana's good. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they ha they're healthy enough – through a seven-game series, right. if Indiana, that's, especially, that's what that's what's holding them back. I, don't think, I, I think just with a good team like Indiana, and if they're healthy and they get Danny Granger playing at a good level again, that's that's going to be a hard team to beat throughout the whole thing. I mean, you know, right. Frank Vogel's a good coach. Larry Bird knows how to put an organization together. It's obvious. Uh, Bird still gets his competitive juices. It's great. Uh, Even as a GM, he gets mad when they lose. Man. Oh, he's great. He he's yeah. still like you know <laughs> walking down the tunnel like he was in '85 against the Lakers throwing stuff. You he know, was, was mad last year. Like, Listen, they should have beat him. They, they should have. They had him on the ropes. Yeah, but it was just that inexperience. But I think they've, they've tasted that now. And uh, I'm all for the Pacers this year. I'm a Pacer fan. Go Pacers! You are. Yeah. Because they're going to beat the Heat. <laughs> they got to beat LeBron. No, I understand I mean, the East is a joke. I mean, like, those are the only two teams that should even be in the playoffs. What's your favorite sport? You know, basketball, as a, as a kid to watch and play, was always my favorite. But um, I'm really getting turned on to this hockey, man. Yeah. I, I don't know any of the rules. I just know it's the most exciting sport. There's a million things going on with absolutely nothing happening, you and I don't, and I love that. It's just you're you know, right. Well, it is weird. It's always like Forsberg's got it out of the corner, and he clears the puck ahead, and they pass it now. He sends a shot, and it misses, and it comes off the rails. And now a cross check, and Lafontaine's got it, centers the puck. He sends a wrister, and it's denied, and it comes back off the rail. And now there's a two on one, and Malkin's got it. Malkin to Crosby, he sends a slap shot. Crawford says no. You're like, dude, you got to get in there. It's like a minute left. This game's amazing. What's the score? There isn't one, but it's freaking awesome, you know? I love that. It's like watching one of those storage auction shows. It's like, it, I mean, it really is like a guy who's Who's great at announcing hockey is it's like how does he do it yeah it's like listening to ballet or something and you know i get the guys that can do the horse racing that's two minutes right this guy's doing three periods of like you know look at it and it slapped off the boards and now they've cleared the puck out and it goes wide and i don't even know what they're saying you it's gotta like, know all the guys too you, you gotta, gotta know, know the guys, guys. Names. you gotta know what the like a cross check a four check uh, i don't even know what you know well, the giants used to have a, a guy jim gordon who also did uh hockey he also did the Rangers, and he was a guy. He made all these mistakes. I used to do him in my stand-up. <laughs> oh, did you? Uh, but for football, but him on hockey was even more hilarious because he would be like, you know, uh, "Pop out of Pavlis, Pavlis to Bossy, Bossy to Trotre, <laughs> score, no save, race, wait, <laughs> come back outside across the blue line." Donnie Brook in the middle of the ice, gloves down, sticks down. Pavlich on Bossy, Bossy on Trotje. Trotje, now word from Johnson & Johnson, baby shampoo. <laughs> ah, that's class. Now word from Johnson & Johnson. Say score yeah. on the radio, and then they go, score. Yeah. No, save, Wes, back out. Smith across the blue line, penalty, no, they're going to let him play. Oh, so let him skate, let him skate. But Marv <laughs> Albert was the, if you ever heard I Marv, never heard him really do I think uh, he hockey. stopped. Marv Albert was the king of, of hockey on the Well, radio. he's going to start doing it again, Is right? he? Yeah. I, that Kenny said that last Marv. time. Like, Marv was asking Kenny for some, like, oh, for names, some yeah. tips. Right. Yeah, yeah I think he might guys. be doing Olympic stuff, right? I, I hope so. Is because what he said? I hope so. We're going to talk imagine. to Kenny in 20 minutes or a half, a half hour. Yeah, Kenny yeah. will be on the, on the show. From Russia. Yeah, but I don't want to ask him about From his Sochi? dad all the time. You know? Why not? That's cool. I don't know. I feel bad. But Russia, man, that's a mess. Be... They're over there at that Olympics. Can I you heard, believe huh? that? The, the, story, the stories I'm reading, it's amazing. It's so crazy. Uh, I don't. I, I doubt they're 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 true. The truth, because uh, the, the one the toilet supposedly. Please don't put toilet paper in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Put it in a bin, <laughs> and there's no wall in between you and the other toilet. That one hotel. If you get running water, don't put it near your face because yeah. it may <laughs> it's, it's, contain it's, something it's dangerous. Speak, it's... How does that? So how does that happen? How that, how I have no idea. And they spent with more money on this Olympics than every other Winter Olympics 50 combined. Billion. Yeah, fifty billion. Fifty billion dollars. But that is, and he's not ready. Was it seventy percent was embezzled, James? Seventy percent yeah. of fifty million. There was a great piece on half, what yeah. Inside Sports did. Something. A great piece, I think. Was yeah. it? I forget what 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 reporter did What'd it. They say? Uh, was it DeFord? Well, they, they said it's just nothing but corruption. I mean, Putin's put every contractor in his that's he's got in his hip pocket. Well, that's surprising. And, and it's they've run the cost up of this thing. It's ridiculous. And they're doing it in this area that's like with palm trees. It's like a resort town. It's yeah, like where the rich yeah. go. And that's why he wants to bring that resortism back. So they've that, literally yeah. spent a million dollars a day since the Olympics <laughs> buying snow because they can't. It doesn't snow there. 
They buy, they're buying snow. They're keeping it under uh, insulated tarps, and they're going to put the snow up on the mountains when, you know, obviously they probably already have because it's next week, but... Putin seems like a guy. Wow. He, he literally seems like one of those Russian guys, a, a villain in a Bond movie, like, you know, like... Yeah. Uh, but, 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 Mr. President, we don't have the money. Just do it! While he's, <laughs> while he's working out, like, just get it done! Get it done, yeah. Sasha! Right. Get it done! You know? so, he's so he's the crazy, guy, like, like, built up and everything. Yeah, he's like that. He's like their Teddy Roosevelt, like, riding around on a horse. But in shape! Right, like, yeah, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, riding around on a horse, like... <laughs> like yeah, but was, he's in shape! That was cool when we had Rough Riders. And, right, and a hundred, well, they're a hundred years behind, <laughs> politically. That makes sense, yeah. about 100 years behind politically. That's about right. Yeah. And he's uh, no mustache, no glasses, and in perfect shape. A non obese Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's a non obese Teddy Roosevelt. Which, I mean, he's a Teddy Roosevelt in the social media age. You got to look good when you're going to post yourself <laughs> and on uh, Does Twitter. anything spell fun like that? Spell yeah. fun. All right, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with Peter Law for <laughs> The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.